Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. Tilt rotors are famous and valued for their versatility. These aircraft combine the vertical takeoff and landing capability of a helicopter with the speed and range of a traditional plane. The initial concept of a tilt rotor was first conceived in the early 1900s by a pair of French-Swiss brothers who patented the idea. But it took decades before engineers had the technology to create a massive, military-ready tilt rotor like the iconic V-22 Osprey. Engines at the V-22's wingtips have the ability to pivot 90 degrees in mere seconds once it is airborne. Particularly when no runway is available, the V-22 is the go-to aircraft to quickly lift troops or supplies into the sky and carry them great distances. The V-22 was developed by Boeing and Bell Helicopters in the 1980s. It's the only tilt rotor currently used by the Air Force and the Marine Corps, and the only tilt rotor in production anywhere. But the V-22 program is coming to an end in 2050, and the U.S. is spending billions of dollars for its replacement. The Bell V280 Valor is the tilt rotor of the future. It's designed to be lighter and faster, reaching speeds of 280 knots, hence its name. Developed by Bell Helicopters and Lockheed Martin, the V-280 tilt rotors are designed to be long-range assault aircraft that can launch rockets, missiles, and even small unmanned aerial vehicles with no rotor interference. They are also made to get in and out of a mission area fast. The V-280's slightly smaller size reduces the cost of production and maintenance. Each V-280 is estimated to cost between 30 and 40 million dollars, compared to the V-22 Osprey's 70 million dollar price tag. The V-280's relatively light weight makes them less costly to fuel and fly. Unlike the V-22, the V-280's engine pods do not rotate, as only the blades with their power shafts do. While the V-280 can't carry as much as the V-22, it does have the ability to fold up more tightly and fit into a C-130. However, the MV-22 needs a larger plane. Of course, the exact dimensions of the V-280 are still being tweaked and changed according to military needs. In October 2020, a rifle squad at Bell Helicopters Arlington, Texas facility reviewed a prototype in order to provide feedback on the cabin configuration. Now, with these touch points, they're con they're, we're able to bring soldiers in who have those experiences up front to give suggestions to the actual engineers who design in these airframes in the front end. 
so those designs have time to make it into to the final product and it's now easier to fix it's easier to apply it's easier to maintain it saves the army money The V-280 Valor has undergone hundreds of hours in test flights, as well as several Army test flights and VIP demos. Bell Helicopters and Lockheed Martin expect the V-280 fleet to roll out by 2030. Helicopters have come an incredibly long way in the century since Bell Helicopter was born. In the late 1920s, a man named Arthur Young began testing small, remote-controlled models in his family's Philadelphia barn. Through these experiments, Young learned a great deal about the flight characteristics of helicopters including that independently hinged blades would follow the movement of the mast. After partnering with Larry Bell of Bell Aircraft, Young and Bell built the first large-scale helicopters with seats. Of course, there were several hurdles that had to be overcome before the safe, high-speed flight was attained. That included discovering a way to stiffen rotor blades as they combed upward in flight. This would ensure a smoother ride. There was also a lot of trial and error in order to understand the safest way to get a helicopter back on the ground. The pilot thankfully walked away from this crash landing. All of these tests paved the way for the creation of Bell's Model 47. Ten thousand were produced, and the Model 47 became a workhorse for the military. Even today, there are Model 47s in service around the world. It wasn't until 1980 that the first tilt rotor aircraft, the XV-15, took off in a test at Edwards Air Force Base in California's Mojave Desert. This was a significant milestone in aviation history. Also designed by Bell Aircraft, under a contract with NASA and the U.S. Army, the XV-15 was the first aircraft capable of taking off, landing vertically like a helicopter, and flying horizontally when its prop rotors were rotated forward and downward. Bell, Army, and U.S. Marine pilots flew the XV-15 in dozens of missions. Those successful flights and the research around the XV-15 paved the way for the development of the V-22 Osprey. At about $71 million each, the Boeing and Bell-developed V-22 would be used primarily for amphibious assault transport of troops. The multi-engine, dual-piloted aircraft allows for vertical takeoff and landing, which is particularly helpful on aircraft carriers where runways are shorter and congested. The V-22 Osprey replaced the Marine Corps' aging fleet of CH-46E and CH-53D medium-lift helicopters.
they were much needed by other military branches as well. The Air Force uses the Ospreys for special operations missions, and the Navy for combat search and rescue, as well as fleet logistics support, as the Ospreys can fit 24 combat troops. When not flying from point A to B, the Ospreys can easily be transported by boat or plane. They condense in size considerably when folded. While not a tilt rotor specifically, these dual rotor helicopters have similar properties. Currently being developed for the U.S. Army by Lockheed Martin as part of the Future Vertical Lift Program, they are also designed to lift troops vertically and then fly at high speeds, like a plane. Named Defiant X, this aircraft's agile weapon system is expected to be the next generation of rotorcraft for the U.S. military. It can fly twice as far and as fast as the Black Hawk helicopter and will revolutionize the way the Army meets threats in 2035 and beyond. The most visible difference between Defiant X and older helicopters is the dual rotors. They rotate in opposite directions, allowing the aircraft to travel at much higher speeds than single rotor helicopters. The dual action creates a more efficient lift and prevents blade stall. In this test, Pilots demonstrated how the Defiant could quickly and adeptly pick up and transfer several ton loads. The Defiant also has the ability to travel long ranges, and it has great combat survivability. If one of the engine fails, the Defiant can use its remaining engine to travel a considerable distance and land safely. Another benefit for combat is the Defiant's pusher propeller. On stealth missions, it can be disengaged to make the helicopter quieter. Another advantage of the Defiant is it can land in tightly confined spaces. Maneuverability tests show how it can touch down safely in a heavily forested area. In wartime, this capability will allow the Defiant to drop off troops as close to battle zones as necessary. The Defiant's speed is its biggest strength. In this January 2020 test, the chopper traveled 100 knots and showed it's capable of making sharp turns. In later flights, the Defiant showed spectators it can go even faster, keeping up with the speed of a plane. When it comes to vertical takeoff and landing, the U.S. military clearly wants to stay at the forefront of aircraft technology. Engineers and scientists are constantly pushing the limit to ensure that the U.S. is better than any other nation in the world at getting troops and supplies up into the air and exactly where they need to be so that in wartime or any other emergency, we can travel to remote corners of the globe at a moment's notice. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content.
See you next time.